This video is sponsored by the National Museum of Modern Art Tokyo. So when I say the word Japan, what do you think of? For a lot of people, it might be things like technology, robots, neon signs, and busy streets in a giant grey city. But for others, it might be something a little more quiet, like temples, theatre, natural landscapes, and kimonos. There's no doubt that Japan seems to be known for two polar opposite depictions of both a fast expanding economy and also a country of deep history and culture. When a country that takes deep pride in its prominent culture starts to excel economically and also has a big event coming up, how do they keep their culture intact? Well, as it turns out, there's actually a whole bunch of different ways that the government enforces these things. So get ready for another deep dive that nobody asked for. So I'm gonna do everything on this paper here because I'm not very good at animation. Uh, I suppose I could ask my brother for some help, but it's too late for that. Oh, my knees. Just quickly before we start, please note that all of this was my own personal research, therefore it was not supervised by the National Museum of Modern Art Tokyo. Okay, let's continue. So way back in the days before 1867, Japan held on to things that they considered of high value in Buddhist temples, Shinto shrines, and with samurai families. But then religion got messy, as per usual, and in the process, a whole bunch of these cultural properties got destroyed. So in 1871, the Great Council of States said, hey man, this is not good. And they started something called the Plan for Preservation of Ancient Artifacts, which is pretty self-explanatory. But no one was really interested because everyone was like, hey, have you seen what the West are doing over here? So then nine years later, the government was like, fine, I'll give you some money for it. And then voila, just like that, 539 shrines and temples were able to do repairs and reconstruction. From there, the government laid on more and more preservation rules and regulations, including creating an extra special category for national treasures. They upped the funds allocated and set fines for destruction of them. Up until this point, the protected properties were things such as shrines, temples, paintings, sculptures, calligraphy, books, handicrafts, and swords. But then in the 1900s, Japan's landscape was becoming a lot more modern, so they decided to pass another law in 1919 called the Historical Sites, Places of Scenic Beauty, and National Monuments Preservation Law. Or as it's called in Japanese, Shuseki Meisho Ennen Kinenbutsu Hozon in 1929, they doubled down again and created a new law for all national treasures that prevented the export of items, whether or not they were owned by a museum or a private individual. So for example, if you owned an awesome painting and you wanted to like sell it to a museum overseas, well, you can't because Japan owns it now. I mean, they don't actually like own it, but you know, you get what I mean. It was like restricted, so you couldn't export it. Ah, I'm not very eloquent when I don't have a Script. A few years later, Japan went through the Great Depression, and so they put even more restrictions on things like fine arts. A few years later, you guessed it, they created a new law called the Law for the Protection of Cultural Properties. So this is basically just another level that's underneath national treasures, so they're like not quite cool enough to be national treasures, but they're still pretty important, so they restrict exportation and they help with the repairing and the alteration financially and provide extra help for the preservation. So now there's three categories that cultural properties fall under. Tangible, intangible, and natural places. Tangible items are things such as structures, paintings, sculptures, handicrafts, calligraphy work, ancient books, historical documents, and archaeological artifacts. <sighs> if they pass the test, then maybe they'll become a national treasure, but if not, they'll just be an important cultural property. But they're both still kind of important, so I'm not trying to like dismiss those ones, just saying. Intangible items are non-structural things, such as craft techniques, dance, and music. One thing that I found actually really interesting about this is that in order to make sure that these intangible properties don't lose like value and importance over time, they actually pay specific individuals that like they've got the skills. They pay them about 2 million yen a year just to maintain their practice and to keep teaching it to other people. And you can actually go on Wikipedia and see like a full list of all of the people like like past and present. So yeah, I just thought that was cool. And natural places is kind of self-explanatory. Oh, and there's also this thing called a registered cultural property, which is basically just like a lower version of the important cultural property that 
whatever. The point is that there is many, many, many different things protected by the government. So throughout all three categories, including national treasures, we have uh, approximately one heck of a lot of cultural properties that are protected by Japan. So just because the government has spent a lot of time and money to protect these properties, doesn't mean that they're all just locked away in a vault. Even if you're just visiting Japan as a tourist, you can still get the chance to visit a huge number of all of these properties. Some of the most famous structures are ones like the Himeji Castle in Hyogo, Gingakuji in Kyoto, Sumiyoshi Taisha in Osaka, and Itsukushima. Itsukushima. And Ik. And it's Tsukushima Shrine in Hiroshima. However, finding artwork that's been considered an important cultural property can be a lot harder to find in Japan. But one place that you'll definitely be able to find some is at the National Museum for Modern Art in Tokyo. This art gallery has one of the largest collections in Japan, and it's the only art gallery in Japan that lets you trace Japan's history from the 20th century onwards, as well as artwork from overseas influences. It's a beautiful building that's located right near Tokyo Station, across from the Imperial Palace and Kitunomaru Park. And it's also one of the few places that you can see some artwork that's been deemed an important cultural property in Japan. So I'm here at the National Museum of Modern Art in Tokyo and they've got a new program here called Let's Talk Art. Basically the program gets together foreigners from you know all around the world to discuss in English about three specific different art pieces from the gallery itself and you can talk with one of the representatives of the museum itself and then ask them lots of questions and discuss what you feel about the artwork but basically it gives you like a greater understanding of where the art is from and the meaning behind it and all of that good stuff so I'm about to go in now and we'll see what it's like. I wasn't allowed to film in most of the building because of copyright and all of that but even in the areas I was allowed to film in there was actually quite a lot of them on display. You're still allowed to take photos in some parts just videos aren't allowed. Can I ask do you yes, know, uh, why this is a important cultural property but oh. the other ones are not? Yeah, in my, this is very personal opinion. So mm, oh, of course, of course. <laughs> if I see the painting or artworks, it has power. It's difficult to say which one has more power. Mm. And maybe those who uh, judge this is an uh, important cultural product. I'm not normally the kind of person to go to art galleries. I usually just look at a picture and I'm like, oh wow, that's beautiful, and then keep walking. But after carefully dissecting and discussing all of the different meanings behind these things and hearing other people's opinions about different interpretations of the exact same art piece, I was actually honestly surprised with how much I managed to learn in such a short space of time. I genuinely felt like I walked away with a greater appreciation of art and a greater understanding of art in general. Is this what being cultured feels like? The Let's Talk Art program runs every Friday nights, requires booking in advance, and I'll put all of the details in the description down below. And as someone who's not normally into art galleries or museums, I actually found it incredibly interesting. So if any of this sounds intriguing to you, I think that you're really, really gonna enjoy it. So even after living in Japan for a few years now, the one thing that I'll always be impressed by is how you can just be walking down the street in the middle of a city, and all of a sudden come across the most beautiful historical building that somehow just looks like it's never been touched. Oh, I'm oh, hit. <laughs> and in researching this topic, it's really given me a, a greater understanding of how this kind of thing can happen in a country that's constantly evolving. So thank you once again to the Museum of Modern Art in Tokyo for kind of forcing me to dive a little deeper into a topic that I normally wouldn't do. So yes. That concludes this week's episode of A Deep Dive Nobody Asked For, or ADNAF, I'd like to call it. Maybe I'll use that in like future videos. I don't know. Uh, my name is Hannah, you've been watching ADNAF, and thank you for watching. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. That's a good enough outro. Ultra property can be a lot harder to find. Which is pro. So throughout all th ancient books, historical the documents blah, 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 blah. so uh strap down strap down strap in and and national and natural and natural play this vi this video is also this video is also sponsored by the modern art gallery of tokyo by the modern Muse the museum of modern art tokyo uh also this video is sponsored by the modern art museum of modern is in the modern art gallery of tokyo modern museum of art blah. and itsukushima shrine in <laughs> And Itsukushima Shrine and what's the where is it? Hiroshima. And Itsukushima Shrine in Hiroshima. Yes. Temples and shrines were able to construct reconstruction and rep 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 However, 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 finding artwork that's considered an important
cultural property. However, finding the artwork that's considered an important cultural property, could you not? That was a perfect take. Australia's so noisy. I feel like I've gathered a great, or gathered, yeah, gathered. Get out, get out of the chopper. Topic, I feel like I've really gathered a, uh, no, I can't say the word anymore. Gathered. Hey man, this is not good.